It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, everybody. Today I'm taking a look at Kanagawa. In this game, all the players are going to painting school in Kanagawa, and you are all trying to put together the best up print, the most harmonious panorama, and get the most victory points and win the game. You are going to have to balance both painting your panorama and learning from the school in order to be efficient at that painting. Let me give you an overview of how the game operates, how everything works, then we'll come on back and I'll tell you what I thought of this game. So here's what the game might look like set up and ready to begin. You have the board, you have all of the bonus tokens laid out that players might take later on, the shuffled deck of cards, everybody gets one of these tiles here, which begins your display, and here are the other ones. And then someone is going to get the star player token, and everybody gets their two brushes here, and you are off. The objective of the game is, of course, to get the most victory points, and you are going to be doing that by gathering these bonuses and painting your panorama. That's loosely how you get points. I will go more into, uh, I'll show you at the end of the video how you get points from everything, but that's basically it. So I'm going to show you both uh, main mechanisms, and that is how you get more cards by drafting them from this board, and what you do with those cards once you've taken them. So the star player is going to flip a card into each of the starting spaces for each of the columns. We are going to be playing a game here with three players. So they'll flip a card in there, they'll flip a card in there, and they'll put a card face down in the red spaces. The red spots always take cards face down. Now, starting again from the star player, whoever has the star player token, they can choose to take all of one column or pass. And every player is going to get that choice. Let's say they all three pass. Well, then we add a card to the bottom of each of those columns. Here, we put a face down one, and here we put a face up one. The backs of these cards, by the way, are different, and they are a clue as to what might be on the front. And again, starting from the star player, they can choose to take something or pass. Let's say the star player wants to take this column, so they'll take that and they'll utilize those cards. I'll get to that in a second. And let's say the other two players pass. Well, and finally, we flip a card into here, and we flip a card into here. And each of the remaining players in turn order would take all of the cards in one column and they would utilize those cards and that's it. We're going to move on to the next round after that, possibly assigning the star player token to a new player. So let me show you what you do with the cards. So let's say these are the two cards I took. I could, with each card in the game, I can either paint that card by tucking it down here and extending my panorama or I can further my uh, learning and put it down here, which allows me to paint something new. So, let's say I want to paint this card. Well, I can't because I don't have the required paints, uh, which are listed across the bottom of the painting there. Too yellow in this case. I don't have that, so I'm going to put it down here instead. And then with this one, I could have done the same thing. I could also make this more uh, mountains, but it, now I'm allowed to paint that one because I have it down here. I just added it to my... Uh, to my schooling there, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that up here, and then I'll put a brush on that circle there, indicating I am using it to paint uh, the mountains this round, and add the card up here. Done. Now, uh, throughout the game, as you are adding to your uh, panorama there, you are allowed to qualify for bonuses. And as soon as you qualify, you can take that bonus. So, for example, here is one of them, the uh, trees. As soon as you have three trees, you can take this card, this tile, and it's going to give you three victory points. Once you take it, though, you can never get one of the other ones after that. Once you get to four trees, you cannot then take this one also. But as soon as you get to three, you can choose not to take it right then and there. You won't take it. And then once you get to four, well, then you can take that one. So if you pass one over, you can never take it again. And by the time you get to four, if this is gone, well, uh, you cannot go back and get the older one. But you can choose when to take it, right? As soon as you qualify, you can choose to say, yes, I'll take it, or I'm going to wait for something better. All right? So that's how that works. And there's a bunch of these four trees, as you see there. Different buildings, as you see here. And here's one of the, here's one of the buildings, by the way, so you get to see what that looks like. Here is four characters. This is two different, three different, three of the same, which is quite difficult. That's why it's nine points. Different other bonuses like that. I'm not going to go over all of them, but that's basically how that works. 
You're going to continue taking cards, placing them in your schooling here or in your panorama until the deck has run out or someone has painted 11, and then you score up the game. So, uh, the final scoring is going to go like this. You're going to get one point for every card in your display. So, uh, that includes, by the way, at the end of the game, the starting one here. So, uh, this would be three, right, if this had ended right now. You are also going to get a point for every card in your longest seasonal run. In this case, these two are the same, and let's say that was the longest run of the season, that's a symbol up here in the corner, well that would get me two points. However, throughout the game sometimes you'll earn these storm clouds, and you can put those over something else to turn it wild. In this case, that would be a run of three. You are also going to get victory points for any card that has the symbol of a victory point. Uh, for example, this one here, if I had built it in my schooling there, would get me one victory point. That's what that little symbol means, okay? You also are going to get the diplomas, which is what these are called, whatever victory points you have on those. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the Grand Master Star Player token is also going to get two points. That's pretty much the game, the, the way the game works. There are several of these different bonuses you can get in your schooling. Like, you know, obviously you can get more different kinds of paints, but you also have this one, which allows you to move another brush. You have one of those built in. That one allows you to move two brushes. This one here, which gets you two victory points and lets you hold on to a card from round to round. You are going to have this one here, which gives you yet another brush. And so in this case now, let's see if I can get that, there we go. And that one would now give you a third brush from the pool that you can start using. And uh, these come with bonuses, by the way. The arrows certainly do. If you have two arrows, you can take that. If you have three of the arrows, you can take that. Brushes, same thing. As soon as you have three or four brushes, you can take those. And then there's even this one here, which lets you paint one of anything. But it's going to cost you two victory points at the end of the game, so you got to think about that one. That's basically it. Keep on drafting the cards, putting together your display, grabbing the bonuses when you think you should. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most victory points is the winner of the game. The first thing I'll say about the game is that I find it to be a stunningly beautiful production. Uh, the artwork is insanely good. Now, I'm not going to hang on that point too much because you can just look at it and decide if you think it's pretty or not. But I found it to be very, very attractive. And the production of everything is very attractive. You know, the fact that they went with this bamboo board that they did not need to do. This could have been anything, but... It's a nice touch, you know, and uh, everything. The cards look great. The uh, the uh, little paint brushes make for a really cool, unique bit. You know, it's not something you're not going to find in another game. It's very well put together. And the gameplay is fantastic. The game moves along at a nice clip. It gives you those interesting but quick choices of taking the card and either painting it or tucking it into your school. You just boom, boom, decide what you want to do. When you pass is important. What you draft is important. And then when you grab a bonus, or if you, you leave it around and hope for a better one later on, these are all straightforward choices. But there's a good amount of straightforward choices, which makes the game captivating. And it's over quickly. It's a game that does not uh, outstay its welcome at all, really. It scales well. I've played with the range of players and everything works well. It's a... It's a neat game. It's one that reminds me a little bit of a couple of other games. It reminds me a little bit of Augustus, for example, with the bonus tiles. And it reminds me also a little bit of a game uh, from Seiji Kanai called My Star because of the cards. It had a similar concept of playing a card one way or another way. But I think this game... I think this game is better than both of those games. This game is just beautifully engaging and really... Uh, allows you to decide how you want to score, what you want to focus on. It's it, There's enough information there to worry about, okay, I don't want to compete with this person for that bonus, and if I do this, then I can try to get a nice long run in the seasons, so I'm going to try to snatch up some points that way. Oh, I want to do, I want to focus on getting points from having a, the, you know, I want to rush the end of the game, so I'm going to get points from the cards. So I'm just going to try to paint as quickly as I can. Forget the bonuses, forget the other stuff, just play out as many cards as possible. You can do that. 
And it's interesting, everything works well together. It's well balanced, scores are tight, really, really like it. So, from me, big, big thumbs up for Kanagawa. I think this one's going to appeal to a lot of different gamers. So I would say if this looks like a, like an attractive package to you, if you like the concept, and if you like those games I mentioned before, I think you might like this one. So uh, big thumbs up from me for Kanagawa. Definitely check this one out. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.